Hey guys. Demand more from life. I was standing on my balcony today, looking at the sunset. And the sunset is beautiful, honestly. The weather is absolutely beautiful. I can see planes going, the people down below, and the hustle bustle of their daily life. It was gorgeous. Gorgeous knowing that I don't have uh, more, a lot of adult responsibilities to take care of. I'm not confined. I'm not trapped in the rigor of daily life. It's nice knowing that it's also difficult knowing. Um, not even, um, I looked down at the balcony and I was just looking at the view. This is the same view I've seen for the last 10 years. For the last decade. This is all I know. This house, all I know. My room, all I know. Okay, I went to school for a bit. I knew that for a while. But then it just that disappears, right? You, you graduate, you're done. It becomes all I know. This is my reality. And honestly, for anyone living in the day-to-day -day lives, occupied by work, by their job, Like adult responsibilities, the rigor of daily life. I, I, I tell you, I reprimand you. Demand more from life. I sat, I, I didn't sit there, I stood there in the cold, in the cold balcony. Cold as shit. It's like, I don't know. I can, I can see my breath. I don't know what degree. 20 degrees on my room. It's cold outside. I stood there, looking at the sunset, which is absolutely gorgeous, just thinking to myself, This is all I've seen. This is all I will ever see if I don't make enough income in order to supplement another life. I don't want any zesty comments about tissue next to my table, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yo, we don't talk about that. I don't do it anyway. It's a waste of time. Anyways, I was sitting on the, I was standing on the balcony, thinking to myself, how can this be what life is offering? How? We often see people online that are living just immensely different lives to us, usually with immense grandeur and opulence and brilliant. Like Imangaji, Andrew Tate, all these guys, maybe Hamza, maybe even with a nice, with a nice apartment and do living in Dubai and everything. We often see these individuals live lives infinitely better than ours, and then once we see their lives, we kind of just belittle it. We just put it to the side. Oh, but he got lucky. Oh, but he got this. Oh, but his family was rich. Oh, but this. He got he got his SMMA at the right time. Oh, he's a scammer. Oh, da, 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 da. the excuses piled on. And our ability to reach that lifestyle increasingly... How do I say this? Increasingly weakens with excuses that pile on. It's like the age-old adage. <laughs> I don't know, I stumbled on the words too so much. If you hate rich people, you're never going to be rich. If you hate money, then the game is over. But how are you going to be rich, or fiscally rich, I'm talking about fiscal, purely, if you dislike rich people? If you cope and say, oh, but his family. Oh, but his, his, his dad rich. Oh but, oh, but this, oh, but that. He got lucky. This is a very common, very common saying. He's a trust fund baby. <laughs> How? How are you going to be rich around that type of dude? If you hate that type of dude. Oh, but rich people are sad. Oh, oh, bro broke in a Honda or, oh no, happy and broke in a Honda or super rich but sad in a Ferrari. What the fuck are you talking about? Who the fuck is happy in a Honda?
Why would you be sad in a Ferrari? Maybe it's just you reach the pinnacle of materialism and nothing feels like it's worth it anymore. But then again, that isn't the problem with a Ferrari. That's the problem with you. I don't know why like people conflate these things. People think life is purely black and white when it's actually yin and yang, if anything else. Life is not balanced. Life is not fair. If if obviously there are people that are happy in broken Honda, and there are people that are really rich and sad in a Ferrari, but why couldn't you be happy in a Ferrari? What's stopping you from being happy in being happy in a Ferrari? You have your kids around you, your partner, your friend, your best friend in the other seat next to you. You go show off a bit. So it's nice. We're all humans, right? We all like social <coughs> social validation. Take good Instagram pics and then put like a fucking inspirational quote in the bio or in the <laughs> inspirational quote as the as the title of the post. See that a lot. To show off. What why are you unhappy in the Ferrari? The Ferrari is just a car. You're probably intrinsically unhappy with your life. There's, um, I, I believe for every one depressed millionaire, there has to be a hundred happy ones. Because it's very difficult to exist in a materialistic world and be unhappy when reaching the pinnacle of materialism. Like the idea of it's lonely at the top is absolute fugazi, it's absolute bullshit. Of course, life gets lonely sometimes. Life gets lonely for everyone. But it's, it's stupid to think, oh yeah, it's lonely at the top. Think about every upstate, suburban, millionaire mansion type house neighborhood. Why are there so many houses in that neighborhood? Think about uh, all those houses, those massive mansions, those beautiful gardens, the beautiful home gym, beautiful living room, beautiful five bedroom, seven bathroom house. Someone lives there. <laughs> He's at the top. No? After a while, money just becomes an arbitrary number. Like I was explaining to my friend um, who still plays Apex Legends, and I said to me, in my eyes, having a thousand kills, a hundred wins, and a hundred K damage, only that much, or 500 K damage on a character is enough to make me happy and make me feel like I could play the game and I'm done. I don't need to play anymore. I'm done. They are like, oh, that's not even like an impressive amount. Oh, it's like at least 4,000 kills now with 500 wins and 6 million damage on a single character and 50 million damage in total, bare minimum, so you could be like oppressive to other people that you don't even like yourself that you're trying to kill in a video game. You go all twisted. The person you are trying to impress is other people that you don't even like. These other people that you're trying to impress are the people that you're trying to kill. There's steps to be stepped on. The most important person that you need to impress is yourself. Second, your family. I do believe strongly that your family are some of the most important people you need to impress, but yourself is by far the most important. If you're not impressed with your own efforts, then what the fuck's the point? If you don't feel a sense of pride, proud, proudness, achievement within your own actions, then what the fuck's the point? Do you mean proud of your heritage? Like, on my family name? Family honor, family tradition, a lot of Asians are like that. You can't be too proud. Because those are the choices of your ancestors. You can definitely take 100% credit for your own choices and your actions, your choices, and your behaviors. You're part of the fact that you took action instead of your ancestors taking action and you reaping the benefits of it. There's two ways a trust fund baby can go. And people don't see this a lot. They can be lazy, a lazy bum for the rest of their lives and just wait for the trust fund to pay out of them slowly and do whatever the fuck they want in their lives. They get like 10 grand, 15 grand a month for doing absolute jack shit. Anything they want, anything they need, anything they ever, ever, ever desire, they can just wait and then the money will come and they can just save and get it. They don't care. Money means nothing. It's just an arbitrary number on the screen like it is for everyone else. Or they can put their nose to the grindstone. They can be happy with their grandparents or their great-grandparents for the wealth they accumulated and keep it going. 
there is a choice. There's a choice there that you're not seeing. I think a lot of people go through this because a lot of people are fucking rich. 1% of the world's population is still 400 million people. Well, that's, that's 5%. I believe it was like 7 million, 75 million people. Which is still a fuck ton. 5% of the world's population, all multi-millionaires, all close to a billion. 1% is the billionaires. So 75 million. <laughs> 5% is the multi-millionaires, hundreds of millionaires. The decamillionaires, the center millionaires. That's 400 million people. There is an embarrassingly large, a shamefully large amount of people that are successful fiscally in this world. Why can't you be successful? Oh, but we need uh, workers and worker ants and employees to keep society functioning. Why couldn't you formulate a company which fills the need that the, those workers would, uh, would satisfy with foreign people or foreign immigrants or what foreign um personnel that's that's better with foreign personnel that speak perfect english and can probably do the same exact job perhaps even better a lot of this um what is it again? social media marketing uh, contract arbitrage type shit is basically you get a client in the, in the uk or the us you, you charge him two thousand dollars a month five thousand dollars a month with like a 10k uh, upfront fee and you outsource the work to a guy in south africa or or South America who speaks perfect English, or Chile who speaks perfect English, and you get all the money, you profit, da, 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 da. all your job is to, to do is find clients and get work. Why well, couldn't you do that on a larger scale with whatever need that needs to be addressed? The world has infinite needs. Everyone likes to see the 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 result of hard work, the result of Success, fiscal success, financial liberation, but no one likes to solve issues, and they demand for more from life, but they don't do anything for those demands to be met. That's applicable to a lot of people I know in life, especially me as well. Listen, guys, my final message: demand more from life. Why the fuck do you have to be mediocre? You're gonna live like 80 years. What's wrong with you? Okay, okay, let's say you be mediocre, right? You're just gonna die mediocre, no one's gonna care when you die. It's a very morbid thing to say, but think, ask yourself that question. Who would really care if I died? Write that down on a piece of paper and answer that question honestly. Because if it's actually, if you're actually being honest, and if it's actually like how it is for most people on planet Earth, your mom will probably care. If she's alive by the time you die, if you die natural death or unnatural death, your friends will probably care. If you have kids, they might care as well. But the reality is, they'll move on and they'll stop giving a shit. And you'll just be a pile of skeletons, a pile of bones. A pile of skeletons. A pile of bones. Underground. <sighs> hard message. I know. I know, hard message. Don't, don't hold me for the truth that a lot of people need to hear. The more more from life. You only have one anyway. And don't use that logic to fucking do some stupid shit like, YOLO, I'm gonna jump off a cliff and into uh, really shallow water and potentially break my legs. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Suey. Catch you guys in the next video.